So Nick here is going to take just a, a few minutes to share about the last couple of years of his life that uh, that has been radically changed. And I've been able to witness what God's done and walk right up alongside him. And, and so I'm excited for you guys to hear. So Nick, go ahead and take it away. Well, um, to start, so the first time I ever like came in contact with CGF, um, well, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I never opened a Bible in my life. Never really didn't know anything about Jesus. And the uh, first time I ever came in contact with CGF was uh, in November of 2020 during uh, COVID. Uh, the California staff, they put on three events uh, in conjunction with the Golden State Tour. And I played the Central Valley Am, which was in basically my hometown of Fresno at Dragon Club Golf Club. And a couple days prior, I went out there, even though I played the course, just to kind of play and just see what the conditions were like. And there was a dude who just happened to be behind me. I, I was with my dad, I didn't even have my driver's license yet. And we went, we were gonna walk nine, and there was this dude, and he was playing with some Fresno State dude. And I just remember looking, it was Pace Johnson, I just said, here's a cheesy white dude who loves coffee. He <laughs> came right on the mark. <laughs> yeah, right on the mark. Um, he got my information from there. We ended up pairing up because the group in front of us played super slow. Um, and then I ended up, he got my number, and then I ended up ghosting him for two years. Dude texted me like what felt like uh, I would dodge him, I'd ghost him, anything I could do. Members at the same home course, he'd go left, i go right, try to stay away from the guy. Um, didn't want to talk about Jesus. And then one day, uh, one day out there, I wasn't able to miss him. He uh, <laughs> came up to me, he finally got me. He came up to me, he goes, you wanna play nine? And he gave me like this like puppy eyes, like <laughs> I gotta go do it. And so uh, we played nine, we started talking about coffee, as Pace was in the coffee world, and I loved it, didn't know much about it. I went to the coffee shop that he was a business partner with, and the one time I there, I ordered a hot chocolate because I was so oblivious. And uh, from there, that turned into uh, a, that turned into us grabbing coffee, which turned into a Bible study uh, through the original Foundations book. Um, and we went through that, and it turned into actually a team study with uh, five guys on my team back when I played at Fresno City College. And three of those five guys ended up getting baptized, including me, which was really really cool. But moving forward, in August of twenty of August of last year. Uh, Pace invited me on his uh, golf fundraising outing at Monterey Peninsula Country Club, and that was like the first moment where I saw, like, like Jesus at work. Like, hey, look, like God can give you really cool opportunities if you just trust in Him. And so I did that. I got to meet Steve Burdick there, um, and he—that was the first time I ever shared my testimony. That scared the really crap out of me that day, um, sharing it at the Hay at the restaurant. And then several months later, in November, uh, I'm kind of a Weirdo, I go to bed at like 8 p.m. and I get up at 4.30. And Pace was driving to a golf tournament. And uh, at that tournament, he told me, he called me on his way. And so it was like five o'clock in the morning and we had this phone call. And I told him, I go, look, I've always lived by like principles. I don't know why. And uh, he told me, he just goes, read uh, Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5 through Matthew 7. And so I remember that day I went and I read those and then we connected about it and there's a verse it's Matthew 7, 7, that goes, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find it, knock and it'll be opened. Mm -hmm. And I just started asking questions from there. I tried to prove everything wrong. Like, like anything I had, any doubt I had, I just started asking, whether it was with Pace, whether it was just with God. And he just kept delivering and delivering and delivering. Mm -hmm. And then four ball come in December of, not last year, actually not last year, but prior. Um, four ball, yeah, 22. 24 now, that's crazy. Um, 22, we did that retreat. That was my first service CGF retreat. Had an opportunity to really dive into the word there. And then came to this retreat last year at Scottsdale. And uh, Brandon Cash spoke last year. And I just remember, I remember his last teaching time, he went through like the whole, I feel like he went through the whole book of Genesis. Um, and that just something about that like really hit home for me. And uh, I kind of had a weird like thought that like I you know I kind of realized at that point I was a believer I was a Christian, and uh, from there I decided in February of this past year I publicly proclaimed my life to Christ and got baptized. Um, from, that, from that point, I will say this: it actually got harder. Um, it was really really great. It sounded you know it sounds great to publicly proclaim your life to Christ, and 
I remember going into the whitewater rafting retreat. Um, I mean, life was absolutely great. Um, and, and, but I remember, and this is a pretty good memory, Matthew Crane spoke at uh, Whitewater as well, and he made a comment. He just goes, Jesus is either preparing you for a storm or you're in a storm. And that was, uh, that was never more true in the summer of this past year. Um, learning how to be a Christian athlete, learning how to play for Jesus, I mean, and not realize that results don't actually matter is something that to me was like so, so foreign, so, so foreign. And so that was one of those things that, I mean, I spent all summer, um, I attend a Zoom call called College Street Family. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Thursday nights. Everybody here is welcome. Uh, just look it up on Instagram if you want the link. But I remember I was calling people on that call. I was calling, talking to Paige, like trying to figure out the meaning of this. And that was my storm that like really hit hard, hit home. And then in the, the fall of this year, um, after not getting, after going through the recruiting process and not, never getting offered, talking to many schools, thinking I was gonna end up playing somewhere, not getting offered, and having to basically take a gap year out of force, um, it allowed me this opportunity to just, just dive into the work. And it's given me this opportunity to become stronger in my faith and walk in just in a way that I just can't describe. And uh, this year, in like the last six weeks of my life, the best, the best way to describe it, this is my third retreat in like the last 40 days. I did the present four hole retreat, did the Webb Simpson retreat, and then now I'm here. I've seen tremendous growth and there's a, it's, it's amazing the call to ministry, it's amazing the call to just the one just talk about Jesus. And uh, praise God that I'm allowed to be up here. Um, a great, I think a great like, like part and like example of this would have been this week here I played, this past week I played the grapevine probably had my worst, I had my worst finish of the year. Um, first round, I went 36-44, um, and then just turned around and shot 79 in that next round, and I looked for every reason to quit. But for some reason, I stuck in it, and it's, you know, as much as it sucks that I took 75th in a tournament and to finish off my year and shot 16 over par, you know, there's, there's a weird piece with that. Like, there's a level of definition that, like, Jesus, Jesus, you know, is what matters. It's not about the golf. It's not about the. It's not about the results. It's Jesus, the relationship He's brought in my life, and the community He's brought through CGF, through all the guys. I mean, there's no reason why. I mean, to me, it'd be basically sitting with Webb Simpson talking about pour overs uh, would not happen without you know, you know, without Jesus. And so that's. I mean, that's really my story. That's really my testimony um, about how how great and how important Jesus is and. You know, I just pray for everybody here that, you know, whether wherever you are in your faith, you know, I hope my story is a little bit of a motivation. If you grew up in the church or if you were like me, you would never open the Bible, that you're able to just, you know, know that that he is, he's truly a rock. He's, he's a firm foundation that, you know, can create joy and chaos and peace that makes no sense, which is what he's done in my life. Yeah. Yeah.